This is Abe Friedhanser from CinemaDailyWest.com, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking with Bess Wall, the director of Baby Ruby. How are you, Bess? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Good, good. Um, I had the chance to see this film at its premiere in Toronto, um, and I could say I'm happy to revisit it. I'm not sure if happy is the right word, but it's definitely an interesting experience to be able to revisit it. And I'm, I'm curious about the genesis of this film and whether... Uh, you conceived it to look like it does, which is sort of a paranoid thriller that has a lot to say about motherhood. Yeah, absolutely. Um, part of part of what was sort of beautiful about this experience was the the film that emerged was the film that I conceived of in the beginning, which doesn't always happen when you're making a film. Um, so it, it was I I started writing the screenplay when I was pregnant with my third child. Um, she's four now, so that gives you a sense of the gestation, no pun intended, of the film. And, uh, you know, I just started taking notes um, because I, I felt that there was something very singular about this experience. Um, I should say the film is not autobiographical, you know, this is, this is not a documentary about my life, but it, some of the impulses and some of the feelings and some of the nightmares and some of the fears that I had during my pregnancy and, and the first few months of, of my children's lives um, are reflected in the film. And, and I felt there was something so visceral and intense about the experience and so unique and, and, and something that I had never seen portrayed in its full complexity um, anywhere. So all of that was sort of the, the impetus for making this film. Are there any films or TV shows that you feel like got sort of part of the way there? You know, the, thankfully, people are starting to pay attention to stories about women and stories made by women. So, you know, there are, you know, more and more women coming into this conversation, making interesting films. Um, and for me, a, a lot of the points of reference um, were some of my favorite movies, like The Babadook was a real sort of touchstone for me as I was making this film. You know, of course, Rosemary's Baby was in my head to a degree when I was making this film. Um, and, you know, but I, I think in, in more recently than that, there have been just like a, a real um, outpouring of, of interesting stories uh, about motherhood and by women. And I, I think, you know, women are starting to say, this is one of the most primal experiences of life. This is something that in a way, everyone goes through, whether you're giving birth or being born, you you have a connection to this experience. It's completely universal. Why aren't we exploring it uh, more deeply and, and completely and truthfully? I do think it's an important film for men and those who don't have kids to see. Do you think it's a productive film for expectant mothers to see? Um, <laughs> I do. I, t I tend to sort of, um, you know, warn my friends if they're going to see it, you know, a little bit about what some of the content is. But I do think, you know, I, I think that anything that sort of um, increases your understanding of uh, or your sort of sense of the potential um, pitfalls or dangers or fears that you might experience. I mean, I wish I had seen this movie before I had kids, to be honest, because um, I think there's something really freeing about putting these nightmares into the conversation. You know, things are scarier when we don't talk about them and when we don't look at them and the sort of things that stay in the dark and under the bed and behind the door. And this movie is sort of shining light and, and giving air to all of our deepest fears. And I think that that uh, can actually, while it can be scary, it can also be really, really healing. And so um, in a way, as I was making this film, I started to realize, oh, I think I made the film that I wish I could have seen before I had children, um, just to sort of allow myself space to say, okay, if you're feeling some of these things, you're not the only one and you're not, you know, alone in it. This is, this is travel, well-traveled territory and you can sort of be honest and reach out and speak about it. And is it a film that you'd like your children to see? Well, there are only 10, 7, and 4 right now. I meant, I assumed in the future. Definitely not now. But, you know, I have three girls. So I'm extremely passionate about women telling their stories and being truthful. And um, that's one of the things that I try to model for them. You know, whatever it is, however scary it is, you can say it and we can talk about it. And, and I'm here for that. And so... 
um, yeah, I think down the road, you know, they, they actually, while they have not seen the film, they are very passionate about the film itself. They came to set a lot and sort of hung out. And they also advised me on some of our visual effects shots and on things like the title treatment. And, you know, they like to get involved and get in there, which, which is really fun for me and, and also fun for them. That's great. And it's, uh, it's fun to see Noemi in this role. I had seen her, I think, in Portrait of the Lady on Fire. I've seen her in Jumbo. And then I actually saw Tar after this. I didn't really know what Tar was when it was mentioned at the premiere. And obviously, that's changed now. Um, but I assume most people will be seeing in the other order will have seen Tar already. Um, what had you seen her in? And, and why did you think you know she was the right fit for this role? You know, I had been blown away by her in Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I just, that movie made such a big impression on me. It's such a gorgeous movie. And her performance in that movie is just one of the best performances I've ever seen. I mean, it's just absolutely extraordinary. And so that was really the thing that drew me to her um, initially. And then we Zoomed about the film. She read a draft and she read actually a pretty early draft and, and came on, you know, before the film was was completely written, um, had a lot of really great notes and sort of came into the process. And as soon as I Zoomed with her and I heard her talk about the film and I heard her talk about the character, I, I knew that, that she was absolutely the only person who could play this part. She's so just amazing in it. And I should say before she came into the project, the character wasn't French, you know, the character was American. And she, thinking of her in the role allowed me to add this whole extra element, which to me helps um, underlying the character's isolation, which is such a big part of the experience of any new mother, you know, that there's a real feeling of, oh God, I'm, I'm alone <laughs> in this, um, for a lot of women, I think. And that sort of was highlighted by her foreignness. And then also, you know, allowed me to sort of comment on and underline the, the particular American blind spots around maternal health care and the support that we offer new mothers. So um, it, it just it was really lucky and, and kind of perfect. And Kit Harrington is also a big get, though I think he probably brings in a lot of Game of Thrones fans who will not be ready. They might be ready for like sort of the gory tone of the movie, but not at all for, for the content. What was it like to get him attached to this? Yeah, um, again, it was complete, um, complete stroke of just the best luck a first time feature director could ever have. Kit, not only is he a fantastic actor and a total pro on set and, you know, just offered so much in terms of just seeing both his character and Kit really is an actor who sees the sort of 360 of how the set is working and, you know, can can kind of say like, well, I was standing here and that, and do you want me standing? You know, he's, he's watching the whole process in a really beautiful way, which was a great support for a first time feature director. Um, but also Kit was a new dad when we made this. So he was also able to bring this really authentic sense of what the experience is like. And one of the really interesting things about new parenthood is that there's a sort of amnesia that happens about a year afterwards where you just kind of can't remember what happened. Um, and Kit was sort of before the amnesia, you know, he was really still in it. So I found myself relying on Kit in different moments to remind me, even though I only had about a two and a half year old when I made it, but I found Kit, you know, sort of reminding me of that, that particular feeling of tiredness and that particular desire to bond with your baby. Um, and then of course, bringing the sort of unique perspective of what a dad feels like in a situation, which, you know, is not my experience. Uh, he, he just, he brought so much. It was, it was really incredible. There's one moment that just still sticks out to me, I think, which is when, you know, she's coming down the stairs and just sort of looks around and all of a sudden, like, so much time has happened and she didn't and I think that's a very effective cinematic thing because you're just like what happened here and more so than all of the you know things that get a little more intense later that's just like uh this makes sense this could just happen so I think yeah. that's very yeah I was interested in those sort of like mundane scares of the sort of daily quotidian life you know like you you think it's going to be uh nighttime and then you open the door and it's daytime you know that that sense of like this is scary but it's not a big horror scare it's just the sort of domestic terror of just daily life was really 
interesting to me and taking things that are familiar and sort of defamiliarizing them for the viewer was something that was really important to both me and to our, our cinematographer, Juan Pablo Ramirez, who did such an amazing job. And I appreciate that as someone who generally avoids horror and got a little nervous when I sat down for this movie and I was like, what did I do? Why am I here? But fortunately, uh, it's it's one I think that that does manage to transcend that. Not that I shouldn't expose myself to more horror as well, so. Yeah, no, same with me. I mean, I, I didn't come at this as like a sort of horror, obsessive horror film fan. I came at this as someone who wanted to tell a human story that felt like in the way that we all know, daily life can have some moments that feel like horror, you know? So I was, I, I, I don't think this movie is like sort of a gross out horror extreme film at all. It's really meant to show you sort of the terror inherent in experiences that we all relate to. Of course. Well, for more great conversations like this, you can subscribe to the Cinema Daily West YouTube channel and make sure to check out Baby Ruby in theaters and on demand on February 3rd. Thank you so much, Bess. It's great to talk about this film with you. Thank you. I really appreciate the conversation. Of course. Take care. All right.